Okay, hello everybody. My name is Leslie Williams and I am in San Diego, California. I live in La Jolla. I am a target victim and activist concerning the criminal expeditions of what is known as organized stalking, which can also be termed as gang stalking. Title this video along the lines of the, dy the dynamics of intentionally created post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, of target forward slash gang stalking crimes. I hope and pray that as many gang stalking targets, organized stalking targets, uh, are led to watch this video. This video is also being made, being made in order to educate the public at large so they can become informed concerning the tactics and methods and maneuvers, uh, a section of them, of organized stalking, gang stalking uh, criminalities that are perpetrated against organized stalking, gang stalking targets. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just fly right into the subject matter of this particular video and I apologize it might not be uh, the best video I ever make because I'm suffering from a migraine right now. But I found it important to make this video today. Uh, I was listening to a Hagman and Hagman uh, radio show and I'm, I don't have the title of it because I found it through a podcast mp3 player. And the MP3 player podcast, when I clicked on it to bring it up, it didn't mention, it didn't, um, it did not, uh, uh, have a title in reference to the guest, but the, uh, guest on this show, uh, is connected to lifeskillsinternational.com from Aurora, Colorado. I'm going to play a few minutes of basically what he had to say within the last 45 minutes of the broadcast because it's pertinent to some of the methodologies of organized stalking, gang stalking expeditions in reference to how they utilize the dynamics in order to intentionally create post-traumatic stress disorder in the targeted individual. Fellow American citizens, fellow San Diegoans, fellow La Hoyans, and fellow Californians. Uh, in fact, I, I dedicate this video to, you know, I, was, I, I care just as much about this crime happening to uh, members of other nations as it's. It, it, it's organized stalking and gang stalking is happening in multiple countries, okay? Organized stalking, gang stalking is a type of a crime, okay? That has a template of. Protocols, methods, tactics, maneuvers, and employment descriptions that perpetrate uh, the, the employment descriptions perpetrate the criminalities and then use the same employment descriptions to protect them. The maneuvers, tactics, methods, and um, protocols are the template of how these uh, uh, employment uh, are the template of the tools that these individuals and employment descriptions use. Now, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deconstruct the construction of how they built the foundation of these uh, terror campaigns uh, and horrific crimes utilizing their uh, methodologies. Okay? Now, uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you, at the beginning of this video, I'm going to give you an illustration concerning one aspect of organized stalking, gang stalking expeditions. And I'm going to try and state everything I stay, say in as layman terms as possible because a lot of individuals out there in our communities are not uh, uh, educated when it comes to psychological uh, psychology, uh, psychological operations. Uh, so when I say I'm going to state what I state in layman's terms, that means that I'm going to say it in a way to where it's it's people will be able to take what I say and see it with their mind's eye. Okay, and I'm not trying to imply that people are stupid at all, not at all, because most people don't even know that gang stalking exists. Okay, I did not even know what was happening to me was a result of gang stalking after I had already been an open target of it, open, openly. Okay, I it started openly towards me in 2001. I found out about it on June 9, 2009. I suffered through open harassment of me direct over and at times direct harassment of me every single day everywhere I went non-stop every day 
non-stop everywhere I went from 2001 till 2009 without having a name for the type of crime that was happening to me. In fact, the day I discovered uh, what was happening to me online in a library in another state as a result of the cyber surveillance of organized stalking expeditions in reference to how the perpetrators engage in the cyber surveillance of all the internet activities of a targeted individual, they were able to see that I discovered the name of the crime that was happening to me. I was literally then picked up from that library by an individual who um, was directly connected to, to the organized stalking of me. I just didn't realize the depth and scope, okay, of how she was involved, okay. Uh, she literally took me to a city hall, okay, in that state, and a city hall employee that was uh, a, a manager, at least, she could have been a director, of the housing department literally threatened me with a veil threat. Okay, because they basically got in contact with each other. She knows. She knows what. She now knows the name of this crime, which means that eventually she's gonna become extremely educated concerning who we are, how we operate, what we're involved in, what our motivations are, and so on and so forth. She's gonna be able to make sense of what has already happened to her and what will. So they wanted to uh, make sure that an inferred message got anchored in my mind that if I get out of control in reference to me exposing them, that they would come after me brutally, which is, the, in which is what they have done. All right, so let me get into the meat and potatoes pertaining to the dynamics of intentionally created post-traumatic stress uh, PTSD of the targeted individual as a result of them being victims of gang stalking crimes. Now, one of the huge sections of well, one of the one of the main methods of these crimes is to anchor. Anchor means to like when you look at what the word anchor is. Okay, I I, I automatically think of an anchor of a ship. You know, like the anchor that gets dropped down from the ship, so the anchor will then fall through the ocean, hit the ocean floor, and then drag along until it uh, connects with the ground, and then that in turn will stop the ship. Well, what anchoring means in organized stalking, gang stalking expeditions, you can research these crimes. I, I suggest, strongly suggest that you research these crimes by typing in both terms, organized stalking and gang stalking. Now, in organized stalking expeditions, what they will do is intentionally anchor specific cues, okay, stimuli, associations. Cues, stimuli, and associations are the same thing, just going by three different words. They will anchor associations intentionally in a targeted individual's mind. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, let me give you a parable just really fast. Say if, um, say if you're sitting in a, a, a McDonald's and somebody uh, uh, walks by you and they accidentally almost stumble and fall as a result of them hitting your foot. They then will either pick themselves up, they will then pick themselves up and get in your face and try to attempt to blame you for intentionally tripping them. They might even assault you, okay? And as this is transpiring, this individual who's doing this towards the innocent human being who's just sitting there eating their McDonald's will see the person who is confronting them in a hostile manner, manner uh, verbally and or physically, by physically assaulting them, that person will say certain words or phrases and or engage in specific intentional physical gestures, okay? And or engage in specific sounds, like specific ways of coughing, specific ways of clearing the throat. And or what they might do is say certain words, phrases, they might also engage in physical gestures and these sounds all together. And what they're doing is, when an individual is feeling threatened, because the brain has certain innate sim uh, symptoms, uh, uh, certain innate functions, whenever the brain perceives through its vision and its hearing, okay, that it might be either soon to be under attack or under attack, the brain goes right into a specific self-preservation mode. Fear kicks in, adrenaline kicks in the brain will start to store this event in their mind, unconsciously and subconsciously. It's called what is known as episodic memories, a memory that is based on an event, an episode. Now, 
When this event is transpiring from beginning to middle to end, the brain has initiated this certain uh, instinctive, it, it does it automatically, okay? What it will do is instinctively store the event in the target's mind through the association of what is witnessed through the eyes and the ears, okay? Come on. Now, and the reason why this is is because the brain automatically perceives that the body and or personality of the target and or the psychology of a target and even the spirituality of a target is under attack. And the whole brain, the, 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 fun, the, main, the main basic functions of our brains are to keep ourselves safe. They are innate functions brought about through evolution. Okay? So whenever the personality feels like it's under attack, whenever the spirituality feels like it's under attack, whenever you feel like you're under attack financially, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, the brain automatically stores in all of the variables that are connected to what the threat is. So this individual is sitting at McDonald's, they had their foot out innocently, just resting their foot while they're eating, and a guy walks by. The person who walked, by, who was walking by the target and is acting like they're stumbling across the target's foot is doing this intentionally because he has already observed that this is something that he can do as a result of the foot being a little bit outside of the table that the target's sitting at. Basically, he was looking for something to bring an about event on using the foot to do it. Just bear with me. As he then pretends like he's tripping over the foot, he then believes that he'll be able to portray to other individuals that are in the environment, and in order to achieve objective concern on why he's doing what he's doing, is because of something the target did. He will then get up and blame the target for intentionally sticking their foot out, okay? And either verbally assault the target, verbally intimidate the target, and or, and or physically threaten the target and or physically assault the target. And why this individual is doing this, the target's brain has already innately kicked in these responses. Where the brain is literally taking a photographic uh, memory of this entire event as it's transpiring. It's storing all the physiological responses that the body is feeling as a result of it being immediately threatened. Okay, the um, emotions that are being experienced are being stored, the brain states that are experienced are being stored, and the thoughts are being, uh, are being stored instantly. Okay, now what this individual will do as a result of him accusing the person of sticking their foot out intentionally in order to trip him, he'll verbally assault the target, intimidate the target to make him feel threatened that they're going to be assaulted, and anticipation, the anticipation of the fear and the anticipation that the target is experiencing is also being stored within this episodic memory. All of it being brought about through the association of what's heard and what's seen as a result of this individual acting, intimidating, verbally, and physically. Then if the individual starts acting out verbally, he will say or do certain things. He will say, repeat certain words, phrases, physical gestures, and even sounds. Case in point, as he's yelling at the target and accusing the target of intentionally tripping him, he will say, oh my God, what's the matter with you, bitch? Oh my God, what's the matter with you? Why'd you stick your foot out, bitch? Or, oh my God, what's your problem, bitch? See what I'm doing with my finger? Oh my God, what the fuck is your problem, bitch? What the fuck you doing, bitch? Okay, this is to anchor, oh my God, what the fuck you doing, bitch, and the physical gesture to this threat, to this hyper threatening uh, verbal and physical theatric that the target individual is seeing and hearing while their brain is automatically and automatically instinctively storing this episodic memory. Then the, then the person will start to get more closer to the target physically and start acting more threatening. Like, well, I want to, you know, they could say, I want to know why the fuck you did that, bitch. I want to know why the fuck you did that, bitch. Just bear with me, okay? Um, and uh, they might then, and then, since this is a staged event, somebody in the background might be saying gang stalk because the body and the mind is storing air, not only the event, but all the things that are going on and around in the environment because they're hearing it. Even though they might not even be consciously aware at the time it's being said. Because what they want to do is anchor in the target individual's mind that what is happening to them is because of gang stalking. And this is the anchoring of fear, 
okay? Uh, 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 anticipation that they might be inta attacked. Because what they're basically trying to do right now with the target individual is to entrain hypervigilant responses. Okay? They're trying to keep the target individual in a hyper-awareness mode. Okay? They're trying to entrain fearful thinking. Okay? Uh, now, you might think to yourself, why would people be doing all this? Well, there's many reasons why uh, individuals like this may be doing this, but one of the main, the purpose and subject matter of this video is to talk to you about the dynamics of intentionally created post-traumatic stress disorder and how it's related to gang stalking. Basically what they're doing is that the individuals who are, who, who are connected, see, well, gang stalking and organized stalking is a type of a crime perpetrated by a syndicate that is in the system at the military, federal, and state, military, federal, state, and local level. That's right, the employment descriptions that are within these government uh, departments and agencies. Organized crime can also be connected to organized stalking, but I'm going to guarantee you this right now. It doesn't matter who initiates it. Organized crime, the wealthy corporations, or government, whoever initiates it, they can bring in the other. Like, say if organized crime initiates it against you, they can then utilize the uh, syndicate members in the government that are connected to gang stalking against you. That's right. They can utilize the gang stalking syndicates that are in corporate at the corporate level against you. Now the point I'm trying to make is this, is that what they basically want to do is intentionally create post-traumatic stress in the target individual's mind in order to create these episodic memories intentionally. Okay? Because whenever the target individual is going through a life-threatening, okay, uh, a situation, okay, which they intentionally bring about because they, see, what you got to understand is this type of crime was literally founded on psychological operations. In other words, psychiatrists played a direct role in making sure that these crimes would a be able to produce an effect. And they wanted to construct post-traumatic stress. So what I'm doing is I'm deconstructing to you, okay, their construction of how they bring about the post-traumatic stress, okay? The, the, the foundation of what they do, okay, is their motive, okay? The steps in order to be able to create the construction of the post-traumatic stress are the maneuvers and techniques that I've already described. Deconstructing it is describing all, everything that they do, the motivation of why they do it, Okay, in order to be able to illustrate to you what exactly is behind the motivation. Now, in organized stalking and gang stalking expeditions, they, they count on trauma like you would not believe. They count on uh, threats, harassment, and they want to make sure that the target individual knows, okay, that what is happening to them is because of gang stalking. And they do that by anchoring the association. That's why I, w I was saying that when they, when that individual would accuse that person of sticking their foot out, they would say or repeat certain words or phrases. They would repeat certain words or phrases, touch their nose in specific ways, call the target a bitch. While other people in the background, because they're being abused as they're being called a bitch, they're being threatened, which makes them feel fearful. Okay, so we got mental abuse, emotional abuse, uh, mental abuse and emotional abuse by calling the target a bitch. We got intimidation, okay, by the threatening posture and physical theatrics that are brought about against the target as all of this is occurring. And they're also trying to gaslight the target by saying, what's the matter with you, bitch? Why'd you do that? Because the target individual knows that they didn't do anything, but what they're trying to do is to screw around with the target individual's thinking, okay, by blaming them for something that they didn't do. That's called gaslighting, where they basically try to play a mind game with you, blaming you on something that you had nothing to do with whatsoever, that they created. It's a form of mental rape, okay? Not only about the truth, but about your perceptions concerning the truth. It's intentionally done, okay? So we got gaslighting, we got anchoring, where they're anchoring the fear, they're anchoring the words and phrases and physical gestures, including the background the background cues of other individuals who are playing a role in this episodic memory by them saying gang stalk as the event is occurring. 
even if the target individual is not aware at that time it's being said because the brain is absorbing it. See, these expeditions in reference to the dynamics of intentionally created post-traumatic stress disorder was developed by psychiatrists. So they know all about the dynamics of what brings about post-traumatic stress and how the brain absorbs its environment how the brain perceives threats, how the brain stores these episodic memories. They know it. And so what they did was they took their education and developed these techniques to bring about the construction of, the development of, the dynamics of post-traumatic stress. They are intentionally creating post-traumatic stress with complete malice of forethought and criminal intent. It is their goal. In other words, I can't say it any plainer. To create the post-traumatic stress is their goal. It's the reason why the event was uh, created and implemented to create post-traumatic stress. What I do is talk to you about what they do in order to be able to deconstruct what they're doing, how they're doing it, and why they're doing it. So, when we now have an episodic memory formed, we also have within the episodic memory, we have thoughts, feelings, uh, emotional states, brain states, and physiological reactions. Okay, it's kind of like when you, uh, like, say if you, say if you're walking down the street and you see a dog run across the street and a car almost hits it, you automatically, and you're seeing it. Okay, you automatically go, oh my god. Okay, well that's a physiological response. Okay, because the bo the body and the mind is reacting to what it's perceiving. Okay, well that's what they want to do when they initiate this provocation towards the target individual who's sitting at the McDonald's. All of a sudden that target individual was in their own relaxed mode state, eating, mind, minding their own business, and then all of a sudden somebody explodes, okay, and startles the target into a different mode of thinking while they're, while before they have a, a an, an ability to say, what the hell is really going on here because they're immediately brought into their uh, de to the defense posture and the brain is excited to go into that innate state of self preservation which, which then automatically stimulates the brain storing this episodic memory. So basically what they do is they catch the target in intentionally off guard because they got to make sure that the brain automatically instinctively kicks in um, this innate function to store the episodic memory. Okay, that's right. And they won't allow the target individual to perceive to perceive the uh, situation with critical thinking. That's why they will also include statements like, "What's the matter with you, bitch?" Because they want to make sure that the target individual is not kept. That does not start thinking critically about what's really going on. They might have verbal reactions like, I don't know what you're talking about, what's your problem, okay? But the brain is already storing these episodic memories because of the, because of the violent physical theatrics and verbal theatrics that are playing out. So basically what they're doing is intentionally catching the brain off guard by in, in an expedient fashion bringing about this event. That's right. My name is Leslie Williams, and I'm in San Diego, California. Now let's get let's get into the meat and potatoes concerning the resulting episodic memory. And again, an episodic memory is a memory that the brain instinctively stores whenever the body and or mind or spirituality or psychology of a target or or the emotional well-being of a target is threatened. That's right. Or the I think I said financial. Anyways, so the brain instinctively, without your conscious permission. Okay, we'll store an episodic memory whenever it feels threatens along these lines that I've already just mentioned. So what you got to do, and so what the perpetrators want to do also in part, is re if they're doing it towards this, this selected target individual, now you can research everything that I've already stated and what, I'm about, and what I am about to say. Hang on. Go to Google right now and YouTube and type in, oh, oh what? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say it, and then I'm, and then I'm going to play you something. Go to Google and go to YouTube and type in remote neural monitoring, okay, and gang stalking. Remote neural monitoring and organized stalking, okay? Now, take two days to exhaustively and extensively research how remote neural monitoring, remote behavioral influencing technology is directly connected to the organized stalking perpetrators. 
If you went to the very, very bottom of Freedom From Covert Harassment and Surveillance and looked on their homepage, you would automatically, at the very, very bottom of their homepage, you will see three PDF links. Directed Energy uh, Weapons is the third, Remote Behavioral Influencing Technology is the second, and Remote Neural Monitoring is the first. If you pay close attention to the first two, you will see that they are able to, when it comes to the selected targeted individuals that they select to use remote neural monitoring on, that they can remotely neurally monitor a targeted individual from a distance. So basically what they're doing is monitoring a target neurally remotely. Okay? In order to be able to see what the targeted individual is thinking, okay, their evoke potentials that are processed, and what they're hearing, what they're seeing, what they're thinking, and what they're hearing. Just do what I tell you to do, and you will literally see that I'm telling you the truth. Now, they can also identify the resonance frequency of any neural pathway in order to be able to, uh, in, in uh, concerning the perpetrators, as a result of them identifying the resonance frequency of any neural network or neural pathway, they're literally able to view visually on their monitor what is in that neural pathway. Because every neural pathway is either got a sound attached to it in reference to what's in it and a memory, visual memories. Okay, so why am I telling you this? Well, if you look at the remote neural monitoring file, you can flat out see that brain stimulation is, is, a, is one of the features of remote neural monitoring. I strongly suggest you research what I say. In fact, you know, to be totally honest with you, I have read even certain targeted individuals' blogs when they're trying to explain their educated knowledge concerning how they know about remote neural monitoring, they have even referred to that movie Paycheck. If you research that movie Paycheck, I forgot that guy's name. Uh, he's like best friends with Nat, Matt Damon in real life, and he's done some movies with him, like Good Will Hunting. He played in the movie Good Will Hunting as uh, Will's best friend. He was put in a chair, and certain things were put on his head, and, and they and the people who who were in control of the chair were able to see his memories. Now, you might think to yourself, this woman's out of her mind. We're not even gonna research what she's saying because she's t she sounds completely crazy. Really? I don't think so, sweethearts. In fact, I was on, listen to this. On February 5th, 2014, I called Ground Zero, Clyde Lewis, Ground Zero's a radio show, a nationwide radio show. It's even actually listened to worldwide because they are also on the internet. I called on February 5th, 2014, Ground Zero radio show from this location. Because a person by the name of Daniel Estelan, who has wrote many books about transhumanism and about and the other non-consent and the other aspirations of some of the criminals in our government and in non-consensual uh, human research, okay, he he was on the Ground Zero show that night, okay. Hold on a second. So what I did was I called the Ground Zero show as Daniel Estelan was still on the show. And Clyde Lewis was gracious enough to take my call, and uh, it, 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 literally, and, and as a result of him taking my call, I was literally on the national radio show, talking with Daniel Estelan as the show was being broadcast. I mentioned, I asked Daniel Estelan and Clyde Lewis if they ever heard of the Blue Brain Project. They said no. Okay, Daniel Estelan had not been educated yet at that time concerning what the Blue Brain Project was. He asked me how I found, how I came across this term. I said I came across this term as a result of researching at Google mind uploading, mind hacking, and mind transfer technologies. He said, no, that's not, the, that's not Blue Brain, that's remote neural monitoring. Now, Daniel Estelan has, uh, has written some very, very good books, and you can Google and YouTube him. In order to be able, all you got to do is research remote neural monitoring. It's all over the internet. John Hall has uh, made some really good videos. Uh, his YouTube videos are titled uh, John Hall Satellite Terrorism. Uh, there's other, uh, remote neural monitoring has been uh, uh, talked about in books, okay? Uh, and since I got a migraine, see, what I want to do is not get too far off this the specific subject matter of why I made this video, and that is the dynamics of intentionally created post-traumatic stress disorder. But why did I bring up remote neural monitoring? Because as I stated, when this individual who is sitting at McDonald's minding their own business, okay, and the perpetrators stalked him into that McDonald's, they wanted to create an event. 
They propped up individuals to be in the background to say gang stalk as the event was transpiring while he was threatening and intimidating the target before, during, or after any physical assault that could have been included in it. Okay? And basically what they were doing was attempting to create and reinforce a neural pathway because whenever a person feels threatened they are going to have specific thought patterns they are going to experience certain brain states they are going to experience certain physiological response in other words EEG signatures and emotional clusters are being uh, created okay and reinforced as the event is transpiring as this event is transpiring are they being remotely neurally monitored in order to harvest the EEG signatures that are being experienced and or the uh, the emotional clusters that are being processed along with the physiological signals well John Hall talks about that especially in, in like in the last year and a half two years you can YouTube him and you'll flat out see that the silent sound spectrum is being used to harvest emotional clusters and uh, EEG signatures uh, remote neural monitoring is as well and if remote neural monitoring can identify that in the resonance frequency of any neural pathway or neural network that stores these see because whenever you have something that is transpiring your brain and your your brain is thinking and your brain is feeling and your brain is kicked into a certain specific brain state and all and physiological signals are are, are kind of like managing the whole entire thing are, and, and reacting to it as well well all of that is connected to a neural a network and or neural pathway they can identify the neural pathway okay of what's stored that neural pathway holds the episodic memory of the brain states the thought, the thought responses, the emotional responses, everything, okay? With remote neural monitoring, they can go back and stimulate that neural pathway and or the, uh, which, which holds the brain states, the emotional clusters, the EG signatures, the physiological signals. They can go back and stimulate it in real time, at any time, pertaining to any event. Okay, in order to make the target individual re-experience the anticipated fear, anxiety, frustration, powerlessness, hopelessness, helplessness, everything that is stored in that neural net pathway. Okay, this is very dangerous, to, and, and as a result, artificial post-traumatic, well actually, real post-traumatic stress disorder neural pathways are being stimulated so they can be re-experienced which includes the memories now if you went to Google right now and typed in brainwave frequency list and do enough research you'll, you'll find it within a day you'll probably find it within an hour there's literally the list on the internet right now that literally shows there are dedicated frequencies pertaining to certain uh, symptomologies to uh, certain diagnostic uh, from the diet from the DSM the di uh, diagnostic statistic manual like alcoholism drug addiction depression post-traumatic stress uh, manic disorders there are specific brain areas brain states and frequencies that can stimulate that can stimulate these symptomologies I'm in San Diego California and my name is Leslie Williams I made this video in order to be able to expose the filthy sewer rat snake whores who are nothing but literal animals okay and what they're doing to targeted individuals and I am also making this video in order to be able to explain to targeted individuals why what is happening to them is happening to them, in part. Now, this brain entrainment can also be used in many, many different, uh, many, many, many other different uh, 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 physical and verbal theatrics that they bring about against the target individual. Right now, I'm going to play you a segment of an audio file of an event, of an event that took place towards me on a sidewalk, right across the street from this area, right up the street. As these guys are harassing me, do you hear them say gang stalk, gang stalking, and gang stalking? I'm going to F you up. You be the judge.
Stalking, I'll F you up. Hold on a second. Saying gang stalk, I'll F you up, was their way to anchor the fact in my mind that the threat and the fear that is generated from the threat is associated neurally to gang stalking. And this is done in order to be able to create disassociation because whenever, see, if a targeted individual has already been assaulted because of gang stalking, go to Google, go to YouTube right now and type in learning disabled woman brutally assaulted on an MTS bus. Make sure you look at everything in the description of that YouTube video. You will literally be able to witness within a blog that is pasted within the description of that YouTube video. So you go in the description of that YouTube video and you'll find a blog. There's two of them at least. And one of those blogs is an attached PDF link. The attached PDF link is a printed out scanned email the the PDF link within the blog is titled assault 11 once you click on that attached PDF link within that blog you will literally see before your eyes the factual reality that I predicted that assault would occur 11 days before it happened in an email file and MTS acknowledging that the assault did occur on October 10, 2011. An individual who assaulted me was engaging in these organized stalking, gang stalking, forementioned physical gestures five minutes before the assault. That's why they only sent me a two minute video and then go to Google and YouTube and type in learning disabled woman exposes how MTS assault video is altered. I'm in San Diego, California and my name is Leslie Williams. So what they, so when, a, when, a, when certain physical gestures or words or phrases or even specific sounds are anchored and associated to a traumatic event which brings on which is part of the dynamics of intentionally creating the post-traumatic stress the target individual experiences disassociation okay to the event while associations are being formed to the disassociation what am I trying to say whenever an individual is being traumatized the brain disassociates itself it's an innate reflexatory response so the brain can deal with something that is overwhelming. That's right, For, uh, uh, concerning the consciousness. If, there, if an event is happening like a rape if an, or a brutal assault, if, it, if, if an event is happening towards the physical integrity of a person's mind or body, the brain will disassociate itself from its consciousness in order to cope and deal with the trauma as the trauma is occurring. As this disassociation is happening, while the trauma is happening, the perpetrators will intentionally anchor an a association to the disassociation. That way, when, when whatever is associated to that disassociation is repeated, the disassociation will be stimulated. Let me give you an example. I'm about ready to play you right now a segment of an audio file. I want you to listen to this because this is a pretty good explanation of how these disassociated states can be stimulated back in real time. Because whenever the brain goes right back to a disassociation brought about through whatever stimulates it, okay, Basically what I'm saying is that disassociation can be associated to something and whenever that association is, is, is stimulated, the disassociation is stimulated. Listen to this and listen to it clever, listen to it closely, okay? The brain receives what we perceive. Does that make sense at all? Absolutely. Yeah, how, we, how we see things is how the brain receives it. So we have so many opinions, so many different uh, perceptions, those type of things, because, and, and I think I'm wired right and you're wired wrong. And so that's where we fight so much and we disagree and can't get along. I'm writing a book right now, The Church That Wouldn't Grow Up, because if, if the church is arrested in development, the people in the 
church arrested in development, then you've got a mess on your hands, and they'll actually bring in a minister who's not like themselves, and it frustrates the whole body of Christ. And uh, the pastor has 150 to, to 2,000 people that are just like him, and they don't get a whole lot done. And so it receives perception, it sorts and analyzes and compares, and that's where we get our triggers from. Because many times it'll be a situation where a uh, wife, Judy, used to, we used to trigger me, and man, I'd go from zero to 60 in, in nanoseconds. And then I realized that, well, what, when did I feel this the first time? Well, when I was four or five years of age and I had a dominant mother that told me what to do and where the cow ate the cabbage. And so I would then, as we would, we would communicate, and I, when I would trigger, I would take a time out and trace back what, what age did I feel this the first time, and it's always under nine years of age. And so we developed a, a thing that really works called, uh, and, and, and I set it up with her so she would know, and we tell our people in our classes, do the same thing with your spouse, that when you trigger, you say firmly, this is my wife, not my mother, my wife, not my mother, my wife, not my mother, and your voice telling your subconscious mind, the thalamus, the truth, the things that, that were triggered because of a mother-son situation will drop out and you'll see that your anger was pre-existing and that had never been dealt with. And that brings a lot of relief to a lot of couples. And so that's just, that's just a little exercise you can use. But here's where it goes really bad. It, it compares, for instance, I, I wrote the recovery program that was used at Columbine. And for about 10 years, I had to sign a deal that says that I would not own that or let anybody know I had a part of it because they didn't want people making money off of that tragedy. But what happened is, is we will trigger, for instance, there were kids that, and they smelled the, the, the smell of pizza. That's what was in the cafeteria when Harrison Clebo went in and shot up and killed kids in the cafeteria. So they would, they would just freak out and almost go into seizures because of that smell of pizza would activate that memory and relive the memory. And so the mind is always cataloging and, and comparing and analyzing everything it's filed to keep us safe, and that's part of fixation. We can't move forward and we can't mature because we're in that survival mode and we'll stay there for the rest of our life. All right, now the point he's trying to make is that I guess when, I guess when the Columbine shooting happened, there were some, and, and, and I guess when those two kids were going through the school and shooting people, some of the kids that he, I guess, I don't know how many people in the cafeteria he shot, but there was a numerous amount of kids in the cafeteria as the event was unfolding. Okay, and they were smelling pizza while they were under a physical threat. Now, after the event occurred, whenever they smelled pizza, their mind was brought back to that event, the episodic memory of the shooting, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, in gang stalking expeditions, they not only they not only intentionally stimulate the episodic memory through possible remote neural monitoring, but they will also re-stimulate that neural pathway by intentionally getting around the target and repeating what was said, done, uh, uh, said, done, or heard as the traumatic event was occurring. Like the repeated physical gestures that were happening around the target for the target to see as the event was occurring. As how certain words and phrases are intentionally repeated around the target as the event was occurring. Or certain sounds like specific ways of coughing your throat or laughing. That's right, mocking. Okay, now let me give you an example of this. Just a few minutes ago, I played you this audio of these two guys harassing me on the sidewalk as they're saying gang stalking. But guess what they're also saying as they're right before they say gang stalking? Because they were harassing me and trying to blame me on the harassment by saying, uh, uh, turn your bike light on or whatever. Right before they say gang stalking, and they, they knew that, the, that one of them was already associated to the gang stalking because he had harassed me in the past. What is that individual saying? He's saying, saying be nice and then he says gang stalking because what he's doing is he's trying to gaslight me and gaslighting is a t is a is a it's a tactic where they try to co intentionally confuse the mind about what's factually happening 
Now, why would somebody who knows that an, uh, that an individual that is in their physical presence who has harassed them in the past associated to horrific crimes? See, if an individual who has harassed you in the past and is harassing you in ways, okay, that are directly connected to the ways you were traumatized, association, okay, is in your physical presence and you automatically recognize that that's an individual that is associated to crimes that have happened to you and that individual is saying, be nice, he's trying to confuse the mind about how you're processing who he is. Then, as soon as he says, be nice, he says gang stalking. That's done to confuse the mind. Okay? Intentionally. Listen to it. So basically what they're doing is they're trying to get my brain to instinctively question my own healthy thinking about who this in, uh, who this one of the two individuals really is in reference to how he is he was already associated to prior gang stalking of me because the, one of the main methodologies of gang stalking is to attempt to confuse the mind as the event is occurring to get them to question their own percep uh, perceptions about who's responsible for the event and what's actually happening in the event it's done for confusion it's also done for neural programming that's right even at the unconscious level because the target individual is eventually going to there's a great probability that they will be exploited sexually be nice. You need to learn how to be nice while these gang stalking crimes are happening to you that can physically threaten you. Gang is stalking, I'm gonna F you up. So basically what they're trying to do is literally rape who you are mentally and then they go after you sexually. To rape you sexually. They go after you mentally, physically, and even spiritually. That's right, and it's done to confuse the mind about the whole entire thing. Any individual that has ever harassed or assaulted anybody, okay, are, is going to recognize that this individual is a criminal. So why would they tr be trying to confuse the target's thinking about what they're factually experiencing? Because it's how they work. Okay, in closing, my name is Leslie Williams. I made this video to inform to expose the truth. Our specific biomedical library staff at UCSD saying gang stalking as I walk by them. Are they? Are they? Getting around a targeted individual and repeating these words and phrases is done to keep the gang stalking of the targeted individual alive in their in their uh, in the conscious forefront of their daily experiences in order to attempt to completely take over the target's thinking because the target automatically has a thinking response and an emotional response every time they're presented with the stimuli that is connected to prior crimes that have happened to them because of gang stalking. Their whole entire goal is to keep the crime and the victimization that is happening to you in the conscious forefront of your daily experiences and thinking. It's psychological assault, it's psychological battering, it's psychological harassment, and it is assault on your logic. It's intentionally done. Okay, gaslighting is an intentional aspect of gang stalking expeditions. Basically, it's torture at the end of the day because the target individual is kept in a non-stop neural mental loop response because of the factual realities that everywhere the target individual goes, they are intentionally being reminded through repeated sensitization methods that they're being gang stalked everywhere they go non-stop, which even crowds out their own critical thinking 
because they're, they're constantly put on a merry-go-round of, see, if you're presented with what's happening to you constantly, they're crowding out your all your other thinking. Just like if you're on a phone and somebody's standing one foot away from you talking really loud. You can't hear your own thinking or deliberate what you want to say because somebody's crowding it out. Okay? Same concept. I got to get... I'm in San Diego, California. I made this video to inform, to expose the truth. And if any perpetrators are watching this video, and I know you are, fuck you. Everybody, I apologize for my, uh, my uh, swearing and so on and so forth, but if you knew what I had been through because of these criminal realities, you would totally understand. I do appreciate you listening, and have a nice day.